might be one of the best times to be a buyer or a seller. It's not considered a neutral market yet because we don't have enough inventory, but where rates are with mortgage applications being down, with buying power increasing, with uh, home prices at their highest point. So if you've been in your home for a couple of years and you've kind of been waiting to strike with the iron's hot, uh, is could there be a better, I mean, at least in the last five years, we were talking off on the yeah. break here. Skelly always gives us his best words of wisdom when we're not on the air. So I told him <laughs> he has to repeat it. Uh, that, you know, five, 10 years, in the last five, 10 year stretch, this might be one of the best times to do a little wheeling and dealing. I mean, I've been in mortgages for almost 20 years and I and this is one of the best times to do the sell and buy scenario, I think, um, because what I mean by that, and I was saying before the break, as we were running out of time, there's more balance. So like, if you looked at, you know, from 2009 to 2015, it took a long time to sell a house. You know, you could list your house for sale and it might be seven months before you got a buyer. And then, you know, from COVID from 20 to 2023, um, it was extremely difficult to get a house because multiple people were bidding. And so what we're, we're kind of in this like Goldilocks zone right now, right. I feel like where, and, and I've, and I'm not just saying this as a theory, like I am actually have client, I have numerous clients that are buying and selling at the same time right now. And so what we're trying to do with folks, if they qualify to buy the new house, and uh, without selling, we can get them pre-approved without them needing to sell, get the property under contract, and maybe they do like a 60 or a 75 day closing mm -hmm. on the new property, uh, get their house ready to sell, get it you know cleaned up, staged, and um, you know it's still possible if you price your home right and it's prepared and it looks good and you do all the marketing that that you guys do. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen people get a house under contract, sell their house within a few weeks, and then line it up perfectly so mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe they're selling the, selling the house like five, 10 days before they close on the new house. I've seen several people do this. And that's something that historically has been very challenging to do, either because it's so hard to get a new house or it's so hard to sell quickly. We're, we're kind of in this Goldilocks zone, and I don't I don't think it's going to last. I think no. we get as soon as we get into next spring, I think it'll probably be very competitive again. And um, so I think that, you know, and then we get into the holidays. So you've got a couple months where you can really kind of take advantage of this situation. I'll go ahead and throw out a time frame. I would say from now, call it October 1st through the end of February, this five month stretch, there's going to be a lot of people that get a lot of really good deals, both selling and buying to your point. Um, because, you know, if you had to sell in order to buy, you, could, you weren't even in the conversation, you know, a year and a half ago. And now if there's some more flexibility with how much uh, equity people have in their houses, maybe they can take a little out to put towards a new house to offset these things. There's so many variables right now and so many programs, which we're gonna get to the one I keep teasing about here in a second. But there's just fle there's flexibility in the, in the market, which has been so rigid one way or the other, for, to your point, for the last two decades. I agree with that. I mean, I think December and January and February are great times of the year to buy and get a good deal as a buyer. Um, I think, you know, as a seller, I think, I, you know, October and November look a little bit more attractive because there are some buyers that do take a break in December. There's always serious buyers out there and I'm sure you can still sell your house in December, but. Um, you can, and it, a lot of people actually like to because it's all decorated nice for the holidays. Well, it true. looks yeah, good, you, it's you clean. Got eggnog, yeah, you, you got, got the, the eggnog, you got the Christmas tree, you know, I got all that stuff going on. And the um, people that are out looking at houses are serious buyers, they're not tire kickers. Took the is. words right out of my mouth because who wants no. to be out at, you know, when it's four o'clock and it's pitch dark out looking at a house yeah. if they don't have a need, Yeah. right? They're not like, eh, I think I might want to move. No, no, no. If you're going out when it's 12 degrees in December, like on holiday break, you're serious. And you're also going to get better service too. I mean, you, the real estate agents, the mortgage lenders, the home inspectors, the appraisers, the attorneys, they're not super busy right now. Yep. Um, but you know, like in May and June, I mean, the last week, like closing on a house, the last week of June is like one of the worst times, in my opinion, from a customer experience perspective, because that's the busiest week of the year. You know, the, the attorneys are slammed, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and, and the mortgage lenders are super busy and everybody wants to close the last week of June. And so it's, it's not always, a, a it's a little bit more stressful experience because you might like say to your attorney, Hey, I want to close on Friday. And he might be like, I've already got five closings right. on the Friday, June 30th. I can't do it that yep. day. 
Whereas, you know, if the, if you're buying a house in, you know, November 15th, the, that same attorney might only have like two closings that whole week. Like you're going to get his undivided attention. So right. Kind of get your pick you know, of the time slots in the yeah, days. Yep. yep. Uh, great time. Great time. And also a great time for Chaffa. Here we go. Chaffa. We've been waiting <laughs> all show to bring back the Chaffa news. Now Chaffa, Chaffa stands for Connecticut Housing Finance Authority. Correct. Correct. Look yes. at that. I got it Let's right. See. And we've talked about it for the last year, year and a half. They introduced this amazing program. Time to own. The time to own program. It's but back. It's back, right? They had run out of funding. And now, I, so correct me if I'm wrong here. The first time they came with $2 million, second time they got another $2 million. And now this time they're back with... Uh, I will correct you. You are slightly okay. wrong. It was they were getting like twenty to twenty-five million at a time. So well, twenty. I missed yeah, the zero. That's what that's it was. all right. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, they got five million uh, starting yesterday, Friday the twenty-seventh. Uh, they got another five million dollars. So uh, let's recap what this program is. I talked about it a lot, but I, you haven't heard from me in, about it in a little while ago. So it's up to fifty thousand dollars in down payment assistance up to 50 so depending it's, on the area you're searching de in depending on the area and depending on the income could be anywhere from eighteen thousand seven fifty all the way up to fifty thousand uh forgivable loan zero percent interest one of the best if not actually I'll, I'll i'll say hands down the best first time buyer program i've seen in the last 20 years um i mean there's some talk of new programs maybe coming next year but those are those are just campaign promises that have yet to come to fruition we don't know if those are going to happen but the chaffa time to own program is available right now in connecticut and they just got another round of funding um so let's dig into the details on this a little bit before we i don't want don't get too excited just yet because there's a little fine print here so oh so they, they changed the program or did they just ref, uh refund it same program they got five million dollars which seems like a lot but it's it's not a lot so i think they're going to run they're going to burn through that five million pretty quickly but uh i have the bulletin here in front of me let me read you this is the bulletin number 263 from chfa.org September 26th <laughs> they released this on Thursday I was very excited when I got it so Chaffa is announcing the availability I'm reading from the bulletin now of additional funding for the time to own program in the amount of five million dollars it says here's the interesting part it says Chaffa will provide funding to bridge the gap until the S Connecticut State Bond Commission approves new funding Ah, okay. So Chaffa dipped into their own pockets. So they, they're, yeah, Chaffa's providing short. This is really encouraging to me because I was not s super confident, you know, a month ago if they were going to get more money. But now I'm very confident because basically Chaffa's saying that they're, they're, ex well, I'm kind of reading between the lines here a little bit, but yeah. it's saying they'll provide, let me, they'll provide funding until the Connecticut Bond Commission approves new funding. And then they say the Connecticut State Bond Commission meeting calendar currently indicates the next meeting will be held October 25th. Okay. So they don't quite flat come out and say it, but if I'm reading between the lines a little bit, they're saying they're going to provide $5 million until they get approval from the State Bond Commission. And then they say the next sentence that that committee is meeting on October 25th, which is in like four weeks. So that to me is a very strong signal that there's a high likelihood, uh, I hope, that the f more funding is coming. And so what's gonna happen with this $5 million is they do go on to say that before they just open it up to everybody, <clears throat> they are gonna allocate that money to buyers that have existing Chaffa reservations. So okay, some, so people who some, applied for the program before they ran out of funding before? Yeah, and it's people that are under contract to buy a home that mm -hmm. have a loan in process with Chaffa right now. Okay. Those people are gonna get the money first. And then, uh, so they they have a process where they're allowing lenders to submit, um, you know, a list of loan Chaffa loans are already working on. When then once those folks are done, whatever's left over of the five million will then be available for the general public. You do have to have a property under contract in order to reserve some of that money for for the buyers. And of course, you have to meet all of the eligibility criteria. Not everybody's eligible for the program. Can you imagine? I'm sure you're going to have this opportunity, but I'm just like thinking. From a realtor's perspective, if I was able to call one of my clients that we had gotten under contract on a property using Chaffa Financing and say, you know what? They just refunded the time to own program and your loan now qualifies for it to receive $50,000 towards the purchase at home that you're under contract. It, it's like, a great call to make. Uh, yeah. How many of those calls do you have lined up to make this weekend? I've Actually, I don't have any, unfortunately, because, um, you know, 
when they ran out of money, I found other ways to get everybody approved. Got so, it. you know, I don't have, you know, people lined up for it, but I would potentially I could be making calls like that. If or somebody, maybe an FHA person that you can now convert into that saying, Hey, I just found this other opportunity that can potentially increase your buying power. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe just people who just happen to buy a house in the next seven days, you know, they might not be thinking about this program. And, um, you know, potentially next week when Chap is done allocating the money to the people that already have loans in process, mm -hmm. uh, I'm hopeful that there'll still be some money left over. And so if I get somebody who gets their offer accepted next week, I might be able to say, hey, good news. I didn't tell you about this program before because I wasn't sure if it was going to be available. But, you know, you're eligible for 25000 or 50000 down payment assistance. So, That's incredible. You and know, just going back great. to what we were talking about, how uh, there's so much more balance and flexibility in the market right now. You throw this variable back into it, especially just here in the state of Connecticut. I mean, I just kind of got a little like goosebumps, like, thinking, like making that call and telling a client that like, hey, we were kind of stretched. I know there wasn't a lot of opportunities or a lot of houses in, in your yep. budget. This program has now been refunded. We can increase that. It kind of opens up where you can look and uh, the things you can take into consideration. And, and if any of those buyers happen to have over $15,000 in student loan debt, they can combine that $50,000 time to own program with their Chaffa Smart Rate program, which just came out pretty recently, where you get 1.125% off of the rate uh, if you have over $15,000 in student loan debt. So that's way too much for the 94 Niners to compute. So reach out to schedulelonappointment.com. <laughs> schedulelonappointment.com. Uh, just to have a conversation with Brian Skelly, and he will tell you if there's the smart rate and student loans and time to own. But we'll get you everything we can. The broader point is. There hasn't been a better time than right now, in our opinions, uh, to be a buyer or seller in this crazy real estate market and this evolving real estate market.